Thank you so much for joining us on The Dwelling Show. I'm your host, Paula Dantes. I've got an incredible guest with us today. Hey, Van, how's it going? It's going really well. Uh, how about yourself? Going great. Cannot complain. Um, obviously, I know about you. I know about your story, but just quickly tell our dual listeners um, who you are, what you do, and kind of what you've been up to lately, actually. Well, I'm a, I'm a general contractor, and uh, that's how I got started and uh, so over 30 years ago. And, uh, and in the process of doing that, I got more exposed to more and more real estate investors, which then I eventually transitioned into. So I was uh, I'm a general contractor, along with uh, being a real estate investor for over the last 30 years. Uh, I've been blessed in my life to have multiple companies, property management, a contracting, renovation, restoration work. And um, I've done everything that you can think of uh, in real estate that's uh, under the sun. And uh, right now I'm in that semi-retirement stage in my life where uh, I've got some really great people looking after my businesses. I have a portfolio of over uh, a thousand uh, doors across uh, North America. And right now I'm just in a uh, semi-retirement stage where I'm just out there reaching out to people and helping new real estate investors sort of figure out the, the trials and tribulations of, of being a successful uh, real estate investor, whether that's on the, you know, just your typical, uh, you know, start off of a single family home, uh, all the way up to being, uh, you know, in a multifamily, uh, 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 say, place where you you are. So, yeah, that's what in a nutshell. No, thank you so much. I think I um, definitely want to track that journey of starting to get into a thousand doors. I'm going to um, touch on that as well. I kind of want to just rewind a little bit. Why real estate? How did you get into real estate? Well, the uh, I uh, I'm a product of the 1960s, and my I grew up in Chicago. My parents are immigrants who came to the country, and were we were living in a one bedroom apartment. And all we wanted to do was save up. Uh, they wanted to save up enough money to buy their dream home. And what ultimately ended up happening was that instead of buying their dream home. They ended up buying the apartment building that we were renting from. It actually they had figured out or heard that it had gone up for sale. So instead of being, uh, you know, being uh, owning that dream home, they ended up being actual uh, uh, landlords. And yeah, I, uh, I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was uh, it, well, they 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 they, they uh, it was an amazing uh, risk that they took, and uh, and so they 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 went out and uh, did that and. Unfortunately, during the late 70s, it was a really a difficult time where we had high interest rates. The economy was not doing very well. It was a ran hostage situation. Ola, you're too young to remember, but it was a miserable time in the, that, that period. And that building that my parents had purchased that was fully occupied, all of a sudden, became, there was a lot of vacancies started to incur. The neighborhood started to change. And all around us, I remember uh, there would be uh, landlords who couldn't hold on because of the vacancy rate was so high that they actually literally torched their buildings. They literally put them, they, 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 they lit them up. And, and I remember no way. walking through a neighborhood, you could see buildings that were just all, the fire had ripped through them and they were abandoned. And so it was during that period of time that this is the sole investment my parents had that we, we really had to buckle down. And we did so by doing everything ourselves, all the renovating work from drywall, plating, plastering, cleaning toilets. I don't know how many thousands of toilets I've cleaned in my life. This was the background that I came from. So when I we were able to get through that process, it was a great investment my parents obviously made. But then uh, I went off to university, graduated, and... Um, I really wanted to go back into that uh, sphere, like being a general contractor, being in renovations. And that's what uh, that's what I eventually, that's what I did. I opened up a company in Chicago, started knocking on doors, hustling, see, uh, trying to get as much work as I could. And then what ended up happening, Ola, was I kept running into the same people, these real estate investors who were buying and flipping properties or buying properties, renovating, adding, to, adding them to their rental portfolio. And that's what got me exposed to the flipping side at the beginning. And then I transitioned into creating our portfolio. And then as, as I was doing that, my bill, both sides of the business were growing in terms of general contracting and this, creating this real estate portfolio. And then one led to another. And then I created, a, I created a mass where I was able to do my own property management, which then, because the relationships I had with other real estate investors, 
added to that business where they came on board and said, yeah, if you're doing that, then, you know, and I've already had a relationship with them. I was starting to look after their properties as well. So again, I've been very blessed uh, in how things worked out. I never really planned this out, but I, it was my gift. I really enjoy renovating. I really enjoy real estate and it's not work to me. And so that's why I guess it's been successful. Like that's what I always suggest to people when new, new folks, when, I mean, younger folks, when they're getting started in life is that you got to identify what it is that you're really happy, what you're really good at, that really makes you feel fulfilled and doesn't seem like work. Uh, God has provided every one of us a gift, some people multiple gifts, but you got to identify what it is that you're really good at, passionate about, and just go with it. There are some people who can sing, some people can bake cakes, some people are good syndicators like you, Ola. You, you got to love and passion, and, and once you identify it, and then how do you know the universe, and in particular and specifically, God helps people out. So that's where I'm at in my life. Yeah, no, I really, really, really appreciate that. And I, and I cannot wait to get to the pile. You know, you've been semi-retired, you know, if you were just kind of sipping coladas on the beach. But before we get there, um, you know, I kind of want to just talk a little bit about general contracting. So that's a big piece um, of flipping houses, right, <laughs> is general construction, right, and just actually project managing um, the, you know, the house or the single family and making sure you can get a good, you know, arbitrage. So tell me, what is this kind of fear of general contractors um, and why, why are they so distrusted? I, you know, it's almost random to our conversation, but I just wanted to get your, your perspective. Well, you know, I, it's easy to understand why there's so much fear associated with, with uh, renovating and rehabbing a property, whether it's single family homes or all the way up to multifamily, because there are tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars that are at stake. One of the ironic parts of taking on a renovation rehab project is that you literally have to take the value of the property, decrease the value by ripping it apart, tearing it out, throwing stuff away, spending more money to then ultimately increase the value of the property. It's a pretty weird and ironic situation where you're destroying something to increase the value. And the whole process is not easy for some people to understand and appreciate because of the money and, you know, you literally, it's a property that you own and you're destroying it to make it better. And uh, it's, it's something that we all have to do as real estate investors because we're all purchasing the diamond in the rough, the property that requires some work, some type of added value to be able to raise the value and, and really see appreciation of that value, right? So the, whether, again, whether you're single family or multifamily, it's all the same. It's the same process. It's just that when I encounter new real estate investors, they, there is a process and a system that I have developed or any good successful real estate investor has developed over a period of time. And I've done literally thousands of renovations through my general contracting and as a real estate investor, like with flipping and the portfolio I own. So you've developed a system. And, and that is what I preach to people is that there is a process to the madness. And when I encounter folks that say to me that they're having difficult times with identifying the proper contractors or tradespeople or having difficulties of getting the work accomplished in a timely manner on budget, these are all red flags to me where the process, the system that you've implemented is wrong. There's some issues, there's leaks in the funnel that you need to plug in the processes and the system that you're looking to implement. I, any successful real estate investor, as you are, Ola, has a process and a system that you got to implement. And that's where I help people out in structuring that so that they can plan and manage their own renovation rehab, really without the need for a general contractor. You can act as your own general contractor and be able to save anywhere between 30 to 50% on the total renovation project. And, and there's a lots of mistakes that people make along the way, new you know, real estate investors make along the way that we could talk about to be able to help make sure that people stay on track and are successful. Yeah, those are like the, I mean, you've just said it all, like those are like the main keys. Um, yeah, so thanks for sharing that. I do want to kind of um, jump to your transition into kind of acquiring. So you were doing a general contract and then you thought, wait, I'm meeting this real estate investors and they're, you know, flipping or keep, keeping this, um, properties in their portfolio. How did you make that jump into that world and into multifamily? 
Well, the, the, the transition was, was simple or easy in that I saw that the economies of scale that, the, that can be garnered by having a, one particular property with multiple doors versus having doors spread all over the place was there, there was something to be said about that. Now, that being said, also, uh, I still have a significant percentage of my portfolio in still in single family homes. And it's, these are properties that I've owned for, for a significant period of time. They've appreciated dramatically. And, and it's a basis on my businesses or other businesses where I'm able to be successful with I, property management for one, right? So I still have a significant percentage of my portfolio in single family. But to answer your question in transitioning, there's obviously there's advantages to going to multifamily route. And there are people out there, real estate investors, successful ones that uh, push to real estate investors to, to go out and actually go for their, you know, to go to, to go to the first start with multifamily and, and not waste their time on single family. I don't know if I'm uh, in that camp. I think there's a, something to be said about learning how to crawl, then to walk, then to run. And so unless you're, I think you need to follow that process and then be able to transition into multifamily or, they go to a person who's a seasoned veteran like yourself, who's got multiple great opportunities to be able to invest with them. And that, pro, you know, you have to, you know, you can eliminate and bypass a lot of the trials and tribulations associated with being a, a real estate investor, right? Yeah, couldn't, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. So, I mean, we can keep going and I can keep asking you a ton more questions. Maybe we'll, we'll bring you back in the future. Um, but we're definitely, definitely dwelling into the quick rounds. These are going to be quick questions, quick answer. You ready, sir? Sure. Go right first, ahead. <laughs> first question. What makes your van unique? What is that differentiating factor that separates you from the next guy or the next girl? Uh, I think that, uh, uh, I think in order to be, again, successful, what you do, what differentiates me from other people is that I'm really passionate. I really enjoy what I do. And I find often people in their walk through life don't most people don't have found that thing that actually really energizes them and makes them want to wake up in the morning. You and I are rare people in that we wake up in the morning, Ola, and we really appreciate our existence and what we do every day. What you do is not work to you. It's something that you enjoy, you're passionate about. I feel the same way too. And oftentimes when I run across friends, family, neighbors, they're not doing what they really are, what they really enjoy. So. Yeah, no, uh, good answer. Uh, second, second question. What was the last book that you read? And what was the one thing you picked up from the book? I've read a lot of great books in my time. Uh, I've told many people that I have, the person that I am today is from the books, mentors, coaches that I've spent. I've literally spent over $200,000 on self-improvement. And I always encourage people to, before you run out to buy your first investment, real estate investment, don't make that investment in real estate, make that investment first in yourself. Once you made that investment in yourself, then you're in a position to be able to go out there and start buying property or doing whatever. Um, the greatest, like uh, one of the books that I really got uh, some great information on that you've asked, now that you've asked me a question is uh, The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. Uh, it's a great book. It's a great read. But one of the things that I, I learned from that book, and I read it 20 some odd years ago, maybe longer, was that he had, uh, there was a critical juncture in his path where he, he, was, he had problems, financial problems, and how he was able to maneuver his way out of that problems and be able to, you know, be continued to do what he was doing was something that I gleaned and learned from that book. So I encourage people to read that book. Interesting. Yeah. Final question. So you're busy. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, on, you're semi-retired. Um, what do you do for fun? Are you just sipping this coladas on the beach or are you still being busy? What, what's going on? What do you do for fun? Ola, Ola, I tried. Oh, listen, I, I, you know, I spent over 30 years of my life uh, dedicated to what I love and I've, I've sacrificed a lot with my wife and my family. And so I made a decision to got some great people in my organization to be able to take, that, uh, take a step back and downshift in my life. And what ended up happening was uh, I tried the golfing. I tried to do these things and I, I, I'm not that person. I'm not the fisherman. I'm not the, the guy who runs up to the cottage and goes or jumps on a boat. I'm not that guy. So really what I'm doing, and we're, which I found another passion is really engaging, like doing these podcasts, engaging with the real estate community and trying to provide the experience and the advice and the wisdom that I've been able to get, 
gather over the last 30 years and share them with people and hopefully make an impact in the world because I have been really blessed uh, through my involvement in real estate and hopefully whatever information experience I can pass on to people, I'm, I'm hoping that I'll uplift them and make a difference. Wow. Really like that. Really like that. Ton. So if there's somebody that wants to tap into that knowledge and wants to learn more from someone like you and tap into that 30 year experience, how can people reach out and get to know you more, find out about you? Well, I, uh, the best place to get a hold to, to get a hold of me is either directly on my website, advancedurgeon.com. Um, social media, Facebook, I, I, you can reach out to me there. I, I, there's a lot of information and content that I post, but my website is a great place because I've got some really great information articles that I've written about renovation rehabbing, which is really my niche, my focus. Um, also, uh, some great advice on how to invest and how to finance. Really, an opportunity to some further in-depth information on that side of the business that I think is really an important skill set for any real estate investor. One thing is to find a great deal. The other one is to really make the assessment as to what it is you need to do and the cost involved and the time involved in raising the value. If you don't have that skill set, it's pretty difficult because you can't always rely on your contractor friend or a property inspector to whip in and say, yeah, you can do this and you can do that. You need to have that skill set eventually if you really want to be successful long term. So that's where I come uh, coming from. And I, my website is a great place to start to get that information. Van, thank you so much. Really enjoyed talking to you today. Lent a ton myself. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you very much for having me.